Yeah, thanks, RP. Um, so welcome, everyone. Uh, today we're going to talk about how the various projects under the Linux Foundation Edge and networking are responding to user needs and how they're evolving the architecture and the software. Uh, I just wanted to um, put out this diagram out here and uh, don't worry, I, don't, I won't go into too much details and it won't be on the test as my sixth grade teacher used to say, but I just wanted to give you an idea of what projects we're talking about and what they're dealing with and here you see an, kind of an end-to-end -end use case and you can see we're dealing with everything from uh, the edge to the core, from orchestration to data playing. So really uh, wide diversity of, of uh, technologies in our projects. And as our projects uh, in recent years are maturing and, and seeing deployment in production networks, what we're seeing is that, or what we're learning is two things. One is that we need to really be addressing the needs of our end users and respond to them and evolve our project to respond to them uh, if you want to see more adoption. And two is that, as you can see here, our projects are deployed in a kind of a side-by-side -side or part of a bigger picture. So we need to collaborate more closely between our projects because this is the way our end users are using them, not as a, in a silo, but as a part of a larger end-to-end -end architecture. So we must work closely together within our projects and external projects and kind of um, evolve that and, and evolve that to the needs of our end users. And what we'll do today in our panel is we'll go into how it's really done and kind of uh, some real life examples of how we do that and how we benefit everyone, both the projects themselves and also the uh, member companies in our organizations and of course our end users. So to help me with that, uh, we have an esteemed panel today, um, starting with Beth uh, from Verizon, who is also um, the TSC co-chair of the Anuket project. Uh, we were supposed to have Catherine, uh, the leader of the TSC of the Honor project. She's a bit under the weather, so uh, she won't be able to join us today. That's the problem with live events, but uh, we'll try to uh, cover up for her. And Tina from uh, ARM, who is uh, the board chair of the Linux Foundation Edge, will join us as well. Uh, and myself, as RP said, uh, the newly appointed CTO of the Linux Foundation Edge and Networking. Uh, so with that, I think uh, where it's not about uh, slides, so I'll stop sharing and we'll dive uh, directly into our uh, questions. Uh, so first, I like to kind of first topic would be about how use cases and requirements come about. And I want to ask uh, where do those use cases come from and how exactly do they get translated into requirements for LF projects? So maybe starting with you, Tina, I know the LF Edge and Acrano have been responding to needs to support public edge and hybrid uh, models. Um, what can you tell us about how these user requirements get translated uh, into the project's architecture? Yeah, thank you, Renny and everyone. Uh, it's an honor to be here to discuss with you. Uh, from my point of view, AI is the growth area for the public cloud and edge. And the AI inference is generally down on the edge and the AI training is down on the cloud side. There should be reliable synchronization between cloud and edge. So in the LF edge and our projects, it depends on the architecture such as the container base, the cloud native. There is also a reliance on basic service, such as those of uh, platform as a service to ensure the applications at the edge are deployed and run in line with the public and private clouds. In addition, how does the edge consider the differences between public and private clouds? For example, the public cloud multi-tenant data privacy protection is certainly higher than the private cloud. LF Edge project considers security and privacy at the first place across 12 projects, including platform security and network security. In addition, device management on the edge is also very important. 
the public cloud edge interface blueprint family sets up a good example for public edge and hybrid cloud models through orchestrations. The AI edge blueprint family supports all this implementation, including security monitoring at school and autonomous vehicle driving, including robot taxi and the, uh, even the cart in the airport and the federated machine learning for the edge applications. So this is my take. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Tina. And Beth, I know the Anuket community has dealt with a huge type of requirements from customers for kind of cloud-based, container-based architecture. What can you tell us about this? Sure. <clears throat> so Anuket um, is, I think, a little bit unique in the LF uh, community as a project that started as a collaboration. It was it was started originally as a uh, sort of a stealth project, if you will, CNTT, that um, was a collaboration between the telcos and the vendors that support the telcos in building out infrastructure and in supporting um, cloud native uh, types of workloads. <coughs> so we early on identified that there was a gap and that there was a lot of projects that were working on tooling Let's say ONAC, of course, was working on management tools and orchestration of those workloads. And, you know, and LF Edge was working on, and Ocrano was working on the uh, identifying various workloads. But what was missing was something to put those workloads on. <laughs> uh, so, um, and, you know, the telcos do build a lot of private clouds. And so, uh, it was important for us to make sure that the requirements that the telcos need uh, to support those in infrastructures was in fact uh, reflected into the other projects. So uh, CNTT was started and then uh, just about a year ago, year and a half ago now, it merged with OPNFE to form Anakit. Um, and I, I have found that it has continued its mission of being um, very much focused on a collaboration between not only the, the telco users of these services and the vendors who create these services, not just the infrastructure vendor, vendors such as Red Hat and Google and, and, and Microsoft Azure and Amazon, but also the vendors who produce the workloads. So Nokia and um, just to name a few, I guess Red Hat also fits into that category as well, um, Ericsson. So, so it's really a truly collaborative effort across many projects, not only within open, um, uh, within the open source community, but also you know, stretching into the vendors and and the users of these services, and and of course Tina uh, Acreno is is also informing the uh, Anikit uh, requirements as well. Yeah, thanks, Beth. And again, Catherine is not here, but uh, knowing the Ona project, I know the Ona project also had to respond to changing times or changing needs, and um, two of the most uh, central areas for, for these changes were first around the, the modularity of, of ONAP itself, where uh, users clearly told us that they need to see ONAP being broken down into pieces that they can be consumed separately in, in a more of a pick and choose model. And the other domain or area is where it's clear that our end users are adopting more of a cloud native technology and ONAP is, is making steps towards supporting better this, this type of both the network function and also ONAP itself becoming a more cloud native application, if you like. Um, so I know you kind of, uh, but you kind of alluded to that, but um, what can you say about the forces that are driving this collaboration across projects? Is it external forces from outside the communities, internal community drivers? What, what, what are you seeing in, in your community? I think it, it's both. Um, so external forces, you know, on the, as, as one of my coworkers used to say, 
Um, if if we um, adopt the you know internally within Verizon adopt the Anikit uh, reference model as our reference uh, you know reference infrastructure, uh, it will probably uh, you know save ten percent of our testing, which you know that's not an insignificant amount of testing. Um, it's not like we're not going to test because all telcos are going to do that. But if we can, you know, sort of say to the vendors, you know, if you meet the Anakit Assured program, and, uh, you know, that means that there's a whole bunch of tests that have already been done. So, we, you know, we can say, okay, you're, you're good. Um, so that's part of the part of it. I think the benefits for the, um, the vendors are that they don't have to build uh, unique platforms for every single one of their, uh, you know, their telco users and their and their customers. Uh, again, synergy. We're not competing on our infrastructure. <laughs> it's just not what we make our money at. Uh, so, um, and then of course internally, you know, we also do. Um, Aniket works with GSMA as uh, so the Aniket reference model gets turned into GSMA documentation. Uh, we're also working with other uh, open source communities. Open Infra uh, has the Edge Community Edge Working Group, uh, as well as the um, MEF and uh, uh, ONS. And you know, there's a lot going on across all of these communities. Yeah, it certainly sounds like a win-win situation. Tina, what can you add from the Edge perspective? What what drives collaboration there? Yeah. In order to build this end-to-end uh, -end solutions, we will need more collaborations between various uh, LF projects, especially with the LFN projects and the CNCF projects. For example, the Edge integrates the LFN Tencent fabric for the private 5G LTE, integrates the LFN ONAP for the public cloud edge interface. It's later become the ENCO and the uh, integrated cloud native, FIDO for uh, integrated edge cloud, complies with the Anokit for the 5G Mac systems, including the 5G Mac size for HD video, live streaming and cloud gaming. Also the edge AI and automotive need more collaboration across the LF projects. Elf Edge uses many Kubernetes-based technologies. Uh, for many versions, it's Kubernetes ready and ready for the deployment. Yeah, thanks, Tina. And I think we talked about, we mentioned collaboration almost ad nauseum, but uh, can you give our audience an idea of what are the mechanisms for that collaboration and uh, how do we make people more aware of the benefits of this cross project collaboration? Um, Beth, maybe you can start by mentioning some of these mechanisms and platforms for collaboration. Sure, sure. Well, uh, you know, one of the, <laughs> there's a number of projects going on uh, at the, uh, you know, at LFN level uh, to do some uh, reconciling across the, uh, tooling and documentation. Uh, so um, the um, I've been working with a number of people. We've started the documentation evangelist group uh, and uh, we're developing guidelines that will apply to documentation across all of the projects. You know, we don't, you know, it's not gonna be, you have to do this, this and this, but what we are recommending is, you know, if it's a code type project, these are the types of documentation that we expect to see. Um, if it's a documentation or, or you know, or uh, security, not a security, um, a uh, requirements document, then these are the types of documents you expect to see. So I think that will help go a long way toward driving collaboration across the projects. And, and of course, you know, we meet regularly, um, you know, during the development day, uh, workshops uh, with you know, with the ONAP community, with the uh, um, with the the Edge uh, LF Edge community, with Acrano. So, you know, there are regular mechanisms to just you know collaborate on projects, uh, and, and of course, there are people that <laughs> that cross across yeah. projects as well. <laughs> yeah, and Tina, any uh, additional mechanisms in in the Edge community? Yeah. 
um, the participants jointly do one environment for two projects. That's what we do. Like uh, some uh, member companies, they do, do uh, digital twins. And also the end-to-end -end showcase and super blueprints are good ideas, like the 5G super blueprint you just mentioned. And there is also our companies want to do the automotive, the energy, or security end-to-end -end showcase on the edge and together with the other segments of the network. There are some business chains that involve a lot of project technologies, uh, tech, data, and going to the meetings are some of the synergy mechanism for demand and project planning. Yeah, and finally, I like to <laughs> plug in some of uh, something that is near and dear to my heart. We have a special task force that deal with specific topics. So recently we set up the uh, under the LF networking, the security forum where we have security experts from the different projects come in and share their best practices because security is, is of course top of mind concern for many of our projects yeah. and it doesn't make sense to uh, for each project to reinvent the wheel and try to solve their project their uh, security issues on their own just inside their project so we're both working collaboratively uh, we started in the networking domain and we're extending it to edge uh, we're ex collaborating externally with the open ssf project to learn from them how we can apply their best practices in our projects but um, this area of security is one example of how we work cross project when there are topics that are uh, top of mind to, to many of our projects um, and finally, uh, is there any kind of specific call for actions from this forum to, to the broader community or to uh, people and companies who are not yet members of our communities? What, what do you want people to do more or how you want to get people involved, <laughs> Tina, if you can maybe start with you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. Uh, in order to create this end-to-end uh, -end solutions, member companies need to invest more in two points. One is the integration of various uh, uh, projects you just mentioned and best mentioned. And uh, also the second point, sharing use cases to the developer community, because sometimes the deployers and developers are two group of people. They need to know each other, okay, what are the, uh, the real world use cases for us to implement? For example, uh, we can call for do your own part to participate in the open source community. The intelligent work includes medical, food, accommodation, transport, smart cities, enterprise, energy, and digital trustable. These use cases from end users bring requirements and the developers work on implementations and adoption of the LF projects and the deployers bring the products deployed in production, receive the feedback and amend the ELF project. Connected vehicle blueprint was adopted by Tencent and was deployed in Winter Olympic. Feedback to the enhancement of release six of uh, ELF Edge Equino. And Google adopts and deploys Fledge for the OT, I think, um, um, dynamic colleagues, uh, Tom just talked about this, and the super blueprints can be laid out for 5G, for automotive, and for OT energy, any, you name it. So um, I hope this helps. Yeah, thanks. And we're almost out of time. So Beth, a few quick words of call for action. Uh, yeah, get on board. You know, uh, you know, there's only upside. There's only benefits. You know, not only to the community, but more importantly to your own companies. Yeah. Um, you know, as I as I mentioned, one of my coworkers said that you know we could easily save millions of dollars in testing <laughs> just by you know just by adopting some of these uh, solutions. So, um, and contributing the use cases. And the requirements, uh, you know, that's that's you know that benefits everybody. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I just like to echo what you said. We're open communities. We don't fight. Uh, you're welcome to join in any form. If you want, just listen in at the beginning. You're free to do so, and you're welcome to do so. We appreciate, yeah, new eyes and new opinions. Uh, so thanks, everyone. Uh, as I said, we're almost out of time. Uh, very insightful. And uh, uh, back to you, Arpit. Well, thank you, Rennie. I think you asked or answered all the questions that 
came through and in I think uh, really appreciate the insights uh, Tina Beth and Rani thank you very much and thank you for moving the communities forward in a collaborative manner thank you thank you for having us thank you